Who would have thought that the next leader of the free world would be speaking of protectionism? And here in Davos, uh, the throbbing heart of capitalism, one might call it, we had the president of China bat for globalization. 2017 promises to be a year full of surprises. And to decode some of them, I have with me the chief economist of IHS Markets, Nariman Bharavish. Mr. Bharavish, thank you so much for thank speaking you. with us here at Bloomberg Queen. First question, what did you think of President Xi Jinping's speech here in Davos? I was encouraged by the speech. Uh, a number of Grounds. One is he came out with a very vigorous support for globalization. What he said was, don't blame all the world's problems on globalization because that's not true. And so I thought that was very good. Uh, you know, don't blame ISIS on, on globalization. Don't blame the financial crisis on globalization. I like that. Um, but then very importantly, he said, look, they're winners and losers, but on nets, you know, we're, you know, we're all beneficiaries, but still we have to deal with the people who are left behind. All good. But most important of all, he made commitments to uh, allow more imports into China, to allow more foreign direct investment into China, and to uh, make sure that the Chinese currency, the renminbi, is not a destabilizing influence uh, on the global economy. But then finally, there was a very strong message to Mr. Trump, basically, you know, let's not have a trade war, let's not have a currency war. It's not good for either of us. So I thought that was very good. There are no winners in a trade war, exactly. I think, to paraphrase what he said. Exactly. Um, it's interesting because we have now President-elect Trump, who very soon will be President Trump, uh, speaking of protectionism, speaking of building walls and blocking trade, uh, and is, you know, issuing visas, uh, fewer of them. What do you think of the fact that here you have China pushing for globalization and you have America building walls. It's very ironic, but let me just say this. I don't think in the end the U.S. will build walls. For example, um, most of the Republicans in Congress, including the Speaker of the House, are completely opposed to this wall, basically saying, we're not, no, we're not going to build this. And I think they won't. On the other hand, he can talk about it and maybe they'll, they'll tighten up border restrictions a little bit so that they can say, yes, we did something. Same thing on protectionism. I don't think there's going to be 45% tariffs against China. On the other hand, I think there'll be more strong arming of companies not to locate in other parts of the world. So I think that's the kind of protectionism we'll see, which isn't great, but it's not horrible either. It's not hugely damaging. Okay. At IHS Markets, you've upped your forecast for global growth this year. Uh, you expect that a lot of that growth will be in the US and the UK, but there will be space for the emerging markets conversation. Can you give us a sense of what the global economy looks like to you standing here? Well, a lot of the growth, in fact, will come from the U.S. We think the Trump stimulus will pa get passed by Congress, tax cuts, infrastructure spending. So we'll see more growth in the U.S. So, for example, last year we only had 1.6 percent growth. Mm -hmm. This year we think we think 2.3. Next year we think 2.6, right. uh, and that then boosts global growth. Now, this is good for the emerging world because stronger growth, higher commodity prices, this is all very good news for the emerging world. The, the offset to that a little bit is higher U.S. interest rates and you know stronger dollar, dollar can yes, create I problems know. for a number of the emerging Especially markets. Especially for oil importers exactly, like India. Exactly, exactly. So it's not all good news, but mostly this is a better environment. So a lot of countries, a lot of emerging markets will do better this year compared with last year. Now, India is a bit of a special case because of the anti-corruption stuff and the removal of the, the high denomination currencies, that could create a temporary problem. But I think that's temporary. What did you think of that move by Prime Minister Modi? I understand the motivation, but on the other hand, the way it was done, I think, was hugely disruptive. Unnecessarily disruptive, one has to say. So, um, so I think that's the way I would say it. I understand why it was done. The goals are great. but. Sometimes the implementation is not so good. I think this is one of those cases. Fair enough. Uh, currency wars is going to be a big conversation this year. Uh, we're going to see that with a stronger dollar. We're going to see that with a weaker pound. How do you see all of this impacting fund flows across the world? Well, I think, it, interestingly enough, fund flows are coming into the U.S. Yes, because the U.S. is viewed now as a, as a growth area. And so that's good news for the U.S. in terms of the funds coming in. Not so good news because the dollar is going to rise in, in value. So, you know, I think we'll, we'll see a little bit of sort of both. People liking it, people not liking it. Uh, it's tricky. I, I, I'm not terribly worried about a strong dollar because there's so much else going for the U.S. right now that growth will be reasonably good, even with a strong dollar. All right. Uh, we spoke of, you know, the protectionism uh, of President Trump. Um, 
the big tax cuts, do you expect that that will lead to some sort of race to the bottom when it comes to taxes? I'm not sure how other countries will compete. But if U.S. is going to be the big area of growth and they're going to slash taxes by that much, as he promises, um, other countries are going to be under pressure. Yeah. Well, ironically, the U.S. actually is catching up with other countries. Most other countries, at least their statutory rates, are lower than the, than the U.S. Um, and so, in a sense, you could argue the U.S. is simply catching up with the rest of the world. So there might be a race to the bottom. I'm not ruling that out. And I think I wouldn't be surprised to see, let's say, the U.K. Uh, cut business taxes in an attempt to sort of boost growth and get things going and make the U.K. more attractive uh, as an investment location. So I think we will see more of that. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to cut business taxes. But we'll see. Okay. I think former Chancellor George Osborne already had cut taxes twice over yeah. in the UK. Yeah. Um, for the last, what, eight years, nine years, Mr. Paravesh, we've been here in Davos talking about one crisis after the other. It was either the financial crisis or that the European Union will uh, sort of break up, that Greece will leave, the pigs, um, the oil crisis, uh, oil at $100, what's going to happen to the world? This doesn't seem to be a crisis here. Do you think we've finally turned the corner after that horrible financial crisis of 2007-8? I think we have. I think this is the brightest sort of outlook that we've had in a while. On the other hand, you know, you could say, well, this these votes in the in the UK and the US were a vote sort of in, in anger, a backlash against globalization, which is at the heart of Davos. And so, in a sense, there's almost like an existential threat to Davos. So, yes, no crisis, I agree. But on the other hand, I think there are a lot of people feeling kind of anxious here, a little uncomfortable. It's like, you know, what do we need to do? What has to change? Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good question. And we've got Brexit, uh, you know, waiting for us down the road. Do you think that's going to have a big disruptive impact? I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, Prime Minister May's speech today was an attempt to kind of lay out a, a, a roadmap, roadmap, if you will. And most of it was quite reasonable. I thought, you know, maybe a little on the tough side, but, uh, you know, it, it's fine. It's a, probably a negotiating position more than anything else. But no, I think, I think as long as businesses understand what's coming, they can plan for it. And that's not a bad thing. So what would you identify then the challenges to 2017 outside of the uh, populist you know, sort of moves or the fears of more right-wing, uh, you know, election results? Well, I think those are, in fact, the two that I worry about most with 2017, which is to say somehow we accidentally get into a, a trade war. I don't think it'll, prob it'll happen, but we could. But the other, of course, as you just mentioned, is the, uh, is the political uncertainty in Europe, because you've got Germany, France, yes. and the Netherlands. And if any one of those, forget all three of them, I mean, but if any one of those were to uh, go in the, in the direction of a right-wing populist sort of majority, that could be very dangerous for Europe. All right, Mr. Paravish, that's the, uh, how do I put it, most optimistic you've sounded in <laughs> nine years. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank your time you. here in Davos and have a good trip. You too. Thank you.